Hey guys, welcome to the latest episode of This Unbelievable Life. Today with me, I have my dear old friend and fellow realtor in Hamilton County, Bill Gustin. Yes. He's going to talk to us today about his Ironman experience, training, and coaching. And Bill, I'm just going to turn it over to you. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you, Nikki. I appreciate it. And yes, we have uh, known each other a long time. Um, it's got kind of hard to believe. I think we're up 25 years plus now. So it's been a long time, but I appreciate you having me on the program. Uh, to your point, just going to talk a little bit about, um, I guess, triathlon in general. We can kind of kind of talk about the progression into the, you know, the Ironman world, as you mentioned. Uh, it's been a bit of a journey for me. So uh, quick background on myself. Um, Nikki mentioned I've, I've been a real estate agent since 2005, but um, I've always been kind of an athlete. Uh, Nikki and I go way back into tennis and baseball days back in high school. So that's kind of how we kind of got to know each other um, and continue to kind of be a competitive athlete even to, in through my adult years. And I just kind of found triathlon, I don't want to say by accident, but was looking for something uh, to kind of test myself uh, back in, say, the early 2015, 2016 area and came across a few, few friends that were competing in uh, some local events, um, whether it be triathlon or uh, duathlon. And for those who don't understand what a triathlon is, I guess maybe quickly just kind of go through what that looks like. You know, a triathlon consists of three phases. You have your swim, your bike, and your run. You do those all at the same time in succession, one after the other. And there are uh, different series of distances, um, starting uh, as little as what they call the sprint distance, uh, which generally will be right around an hour and 10, to an hour and a half you know, long, just in terms of overall time that's devoted to it, all the way up to the Ironman level. The full Ironman level is 140.6 miles combined, and that consists of a 2.4 mile swim, 112 mile bike, and then you run a full marathon. Uh, which I know seems kind of crazy, uh, but that's that's what uh, Ironman looks like. So way back in, I'd say 2015, 2016, like I mentioned, I was kind of looking for something else to do with myself. Uh, started, again, at the, the basic level, that, that sprint distance level. And I've got to be honest, I didn't learn how to swim until I started uh, triathlon. So, you know, for those out there that may be listening who don't have a swimming background or just have some current concerns about getting and going in the water, uh, whether you be in your 20s, 30s, you know, I'm in my mid 40s now. So I started, you know, in my late 30s, really kind of getting involved. Um, don't be afraid. It can be done. It took me almost two years to get to the point where I was really kind of confident with my level of stamina in the water. Um, you know, I always try to tell, um, uh, break the ice, if you will, with people that I'm talking, uh, triathlon about for the first time, or those who may be interested in getting involved, but have some, maybe some fear there, uh, especially in the water that seems to be, you know, a lot of people's a sticking point when it comes to actually getting themselves started in, in triathlon. Uh, but you know, the first four races I ever competed in, I like to tell people I swam 90% of it on my back which is probably not the fastest or uh, the most efficient way to get things done. But, you know, the whole process itself is, is just completing it. So, um, again, uh, it takes a little time and uh, some dedication to kind of to build yourself up through that. And the first two years, I was just kind of doing some short races. Um, again, kind of getting my feet underneath me, no pun intended. And uh, really kind of starting in that way at, at this, uh, the shorter distance races. And then, you know, you kind of get hooked. Those who have even uh, tried triathlon or have an interest in doing it, um, you know, endurance racing as a whole is a very um, it's a rewarding sport, uh, but it, it's, you know, time dedicated. Uh, you really have to be um, on top of things when it comes to scheduling and, and you know, different types of personalities are maybe better suited for, for the sport uh, than others. But um, again, it's, it's very rewarding on the backside. So, um, getting into the longer distance races again, I was probably year two that I said, I set out to do my first half Ironman. And again, that's just exactly how it sounds. It's half the, the distance of full. Uh, so you're looking at a 70.3 miles in, in a given day, which can take you anywhere between, you know, five to seven, eight hours plus to complete, depending on your fitness level and your experience. And, uh, that was, uh, something different for me. Uh, I definitely had to overcome some fears. Again, the waters has not really been my friend. Uh, I'm becoming more comfortable with that over time. 
Uh, but that first race, again, once you kind of do that, and my, my first race was in Niagara Falls. I told my wife, if we're going to, I'm going to do this thing. I want to do it in a, in an area, you know, that's, uh, you know, somewhere nice to go that you can kind of look and enjoy the scenery and so on and so forth. So that's where I did my first race. And then, you know, uh, I've done an additional nine since then. So each year you kind of built, obviously we had the COVID year where there was no racing going on. So we kind of missed an opportunity there. Um, but then in 2019, so the year before COVID, uh, was when I competed in my first full Ironman distance race. And that was in Louisville, Kentucky. And, uh, that was, um, that was a long process. Um, it was about 13 hours from start to finish for me. Um, and again, depending on your fitness level and your experience, um, those times can, can certainly vary. You know, your pros can, can do a full Ironman event in eight hours, which is kind of mon- mind boggling when you really think about it, but, uh, it's just one of those things where, uh, if you, if you're looking for something to kind of challenge yourself and to see, uh, what your body and, and your mind really is capable of doing, because there's a big physical aspect, um, to the sport. But when you talk about long distance endurance racing, there's a huge mental component to, to the sport as well. I mean, you have your, your three legs of the race, your swim, your bike, and your run, um, but I really think that there's, you know, two additional legs that maybe don't get talked about as much. Uh, the first one is is the mental preparation that's required for something like this, um, because there are going to be times where you kind of question what the heck you're doing out there uh, on the racetrack. Uh, you know, even uh, during my first full Ironman, there were a couple instances where, you know, I'm on the bike for, you know, you're on the bike for maybe five, six hours at a time. And you start to kind of wonder, like, you know, if I just stop what I'm doing right now. No one's really going to know that, I, you know, that you didn't complete it or, or, or think less of you necessarily, but, um, but that's also the competitive nature and you kind of keeps you, keeps you going, but it's that mental piece where you kind of have to pull yourself out of some, some dark places sometimes to kind of really push yourself. And I know you're Nikki, I know you've done some, some marathons, so you've probably maybe experienced that in the past. I'm not sure if that's accurate, but I know that's for us, especially um, given these longer distance races, you can definitely kind of find yourself in those those holes and you just kind of have to pull yourself out of them. Um, and then that's kind of the third component. And the fourth component, really racing, really comes down to nutrition. And that's something, again, you mentioned in your introduction, uh, you know, I've been doing Ironman distance races now for, uh, I guess, going on six years now. Um, end of last year, I became an uh, Ironman certified coach. So I, obviously I, I really enjoy the sport to, to kind of put your body through this for a long period of time. And I just kind of want to give back to, to other in, individuals, whether that's be someone who's just interested in getting started kind of like I did years ago or someone who's maybe a little more seasoned, or maybe they've done some shorter distance races and they're looking to kind of take themselves to the next level. Um, I just felt there was an opportunity there for me to not only learn more about the sport, and all the intricacies and, and things of that nature that are involved, especially um, in the physiological aspect, which is, is an area that I'm not as akin to. But again, through the coaching process, I've learned a lot more. And so I'm just looking to kind of get back and, and build, um, you know, uh, see what we can do in terms of working through that and, and helping others kind of grow the sport, so to speak. So that's kind of where I'm at. Um, and so now we're just in the right now it's kind of off season still uh, for a lot of us, but we're starting to to pick things up. So you know if there are individuals out there who have an interest in getting involved in the sport, now is a really good time. Um, generally speaking, especially here in the Midwest, you can't do a. I mean, you can, certainly can get out and run, and if you've got a local pool or a Y, there's certainly opportunities there to get uh, get in the water. Um, you know, bike uh biking in outside is a little difficult this time of the year but there are opportunities there um in terms of indoor uh access to different things too that you can do so now is a really good time to start um putting together a plan or getting with someone like myself who can kind of assist with with helping uh kind of take you to that ne- that next level so that's kind of what we're hoping to do and it's something like i said it's um been a kind of a passion of mine for a number of years and i've had made some really good relationships with a you know a lot of good people um that are like minded in the sport and um you know i'm i'm part of a team here locally in the in the carmel area 
uh, I guess I should get a, a shout out to it's a PXP Endurance. So if you've, if you've heard of PXP or, or interested, um, uh, Coach uh, Paul Plummer, who's kind of my mentor, um, I'm going to be kind of coaching, if you will, or, um, underneath you know his umbrella. Um, but got a great group of people there, and, and uh, like I said, it's, it's a lot of it's a very um, individual sport in the sense that obviously you're doing all these events um, on your own. Uh, and a lot, there's a lot of times that you're kind of spent doing things by yourself, right? Whether it be swimming or running. I mean, you can certainly find partners, but there, there's a lot of training involved where, it, again, you, you're doing a lot of things on your own. So it's nice to be part of a group or a team that you can kind of feed off one another. And not necessarily in a, in a competitive nature, although there's some element of competition there that we like to kind of have uh, amongst each other to kind of push each other. Uh, but just kind of having that camaraderie and, and whatnot in a team and team environment is important. And uh, obviously growing up playing team sports, you know, that's, that's something that I always valued, you know, um, growing up. So it's nice that I'm kind of able to apply that to what otherwise is more of an individual solo kind of sport. So it's kind of fun. So uh, I don't know if you have any other specific questions, Nikki, if that's kind of like my, I guess my brief kind of rundown. I know. That's how I kind of got involved. Well, yeah. I know we talked about kind of how you tie your Ironman stuff into your real estate career. You want to tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, I, you know, it's just I think the way that, that I look at it is uh, being able to take um, different things and that I'm learning through um, the sport of triathlon. Uh, again, and being able to come over overcome adversity, being able to kind of uh, really utilize a lot of mental focus. Um, and just just dedication to um, your craft, if you will, and being able to kind of apply that you know, from a in a business perspective. And, and you know, obviously, I'm in real estate as you are. Um, you can really kind of apply that to a lot of different industries. But you know, being able to um, apply some of those things towards what I do in my day to day uh, business is always important. Realizing and, and helping your clients understand that, hey, I'm, I'm going to see this through the long haul. There are going to be some challenges and things that we're going to maybe need to overcome with um, with a transaction or, or what have you. But knowing that I'm going to be by them every step of the way, um, again, that kind of applies to the whole coaching thing, too. And I, I kind of really enjoy being able to take individuals from you know point A to point B and, um, you know, ultimately seeing them on the other side uh, where we can all be successful and, and, and see um, the fruits of our labor together. So it's just some of those things that I kind of like to um, let people know that, hey, yes, I'm, you know, th this is a, an endurance level sport. Not everybody's going to be interested in doing it, but we can take a lot of elements from it. We can apply it to our day to day life. And uh, again, I think that's important, too, because, um, you know, again, it's it's a. A time consuming, I, I, you know, not to get off the subject, but I, I do have to, you know, the other element to this that I didn't talk about, I guess, previously is just the, um, the amount of support needed by, by family, you know, uh, my wife who's in the other room now, but she, I, I asked her if she maybe want to be on camera. She, she was maybe a little shy for that, but, um, you know, I really have to say you, it's, it's really good to have a support group behind you. You know, again, I mentioned having a team, but you know, having you know your your family behind you and, and very supportive is critical too, because there are a lot of hours, especially on the weekends when it's you know middle of the summer and you're out for half a day or or sometimes longer depending on what you're doing in terms of training. And you know I have two two sons. I know you you have two children as well. So um, it's just one of those things where. Um, if, if I didn't have that, it would be very difficult for me to, to be successful. And that really applies to, you know, business as well. I mean, in, in our, in our world, we're, we're, uh, constantly available, right. Um, if there's uh, a need out there from a client. So just having that support system behind you is important, um, you know, both aspects, but anyway, I didn't mean to get sidetracked there. Um, but that's, that's kind of how I look at things and, there's a, there's other things I'm certainly we could talk to, but you know I think those are some of the some of the more important things I just kind of wanted to review. And certainly, if anybody has any, any questions, I don't know if opportunity there to to reach out and and uh, and ask. I'm always available to to help out any way I can. So I think the two major takeaways that I have are first that something like this and like when I was doing my marathon running, it takes dedication. 
And I think that that's something that translates through to our professional lives and our personal lives. And it shows a level of dedication that we have both had in everything we do. I think it's just our personality. So anybody that's going to undertake something like the long distance running, like what I used to do before my back injury or the Ironmans that you are doing, um, you have to have a level of dedication. And once you can kind of attain that level um, again, I totally think it transcends everything in your life. And, and so I would highly, highly encourage anyone that's even remotely considering something like this, um, to reach out to you because yeah. I think having a coach and having a trainer or having a mentor is so important. Um, I know that I just, I learned a lot of the things that I was doing on my own and I probably didn't do half of them. Right. But that was okay. I mean, everybody, we're all on our own journey, but I think especially an iron man, if you start with a trainer, you're going to set yourself up for success. I know you were talking about nutrition for somebody like me that, that is doing keto. Like you have to completely rethink your diet and what you're doing to yeah. make sure that you are fueling your body appropriately for something like this. Cause I can't tell you, even when I tried to go back to running, when I was on the keto, how fast I would flame out. So it's something that, you know, I'm really going to have to rethink if I want to get back into running. So again, I think that coaching is critical from the physical aspect, but also the mental, because you'd have somebody that you're holding yourself accountable to as well. So right. if anybody has any questions, by all means, send them my way or send them directly to Bill. I'll put his contact information in my post. And we yeah. are so grateful to have him on the show today. And I hope everyone is having a blessed and fantastic day. Thanks so much. Yeah, for I, really, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Nikki.